and welcome back to Visit Felt Coast. This is a update on the beach works and what's happening next because it's all it's all gathering pace at, at this seafront down in uh, down in Wyre, which is Cleveland and, and Fleetwood. So we're going to have a little look at what they're doing, a little bit of an update, and <laughs> they're all raving at me. <laughs> Um, and if you want to know anything else, if you want any other information, it's all available online and I'll put the link to it in the description underneath the video. So there's, there's timescales and plans and all the, all the gubbins that you could ever possibly want on the, on the website. So don't forget, make sure that you've subscribed, make sure that you've hit the bell for notifications, make sure that you've signed up for your Visit File Coast email newsletter. And we will go and see what we can see, see, see on the beach today. I've not been down here for a few weeks and it looks very different already. Very different, in fact. So this is a finished piece of work, except for the bit that joins it up to the seawall. So that's your, your end marker pole your groin, your concrete crossover ramp. Can you see that the concrete looks different as well? It looks tidy and neat and finished off. That's got its top layer on. So I've explained before that there's a, a top layer of super strong, expensive concrete that finishes it off. So the only bit that's missing to finish it off is some concrete work, which will go in this gap here and possibly a few more rocks, I would suspect. So these guys are putting the formers in and doing the next ramp and I know that this concrete that they're using for the top layer is super strong and super expensive and a few people have commented that the actual grounds themselves look a little bit like they're wearing away the, the ramps. Um, that's because that's ordinary concrete and it's a lot more expensive the bit that, that goes on the top layer so it's it's just the the capping the capping layer that's made that way because it's all cast in layers in situ on the beach so you can see here they're marking up ready to do the the concreting in the next the next layer and this piece of of work here along the edge of the the sea wall that is the concrete tying that the building which will join the crossover ramp up to the steps and then the rocks join up to the end of it and go out up towards sea and join the ramp up so the guys cleaning the surface off and cleaning the grot off that's been in the in the sea and the the water Ready for putting the ready for putting the next layer of concrete over the top and making sure that they've got a proper a proper tying and it all joins together properly. And there's actually a form on this next crossover ramp. So not many more weeks and they'll be finishing up what they're doing on Cleveland Promenade for the summer bathing water season. So I'm, I'm not sure of the exact date, but it'll not be long and then they're going to be working, concentrating their efforts down at Fleetwood near the Sea Cadet Basin and Russell Point. There's a bathing water restriction from the 1st of May so they're going to have to pack up and move somewhere else so that's how they've planned the work. So it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a feat of modern engineering just to even get in the organisation of everything that they're doing into the right place on the right days at the right time. <laughs> Just like that, without the blink of an eye, the sun's shining and we're in Fleetwood. So this is the Sea Cadets base and the compound where the rocks are being delivered in and, and distributed onto the beach, which now has a beautifully shiny tarmac car park so there are no longer a million and one potholes <laughs> which is much better because oh goodness me that was a 
that was a bad car park so we'll just have a little walk up to the gate and we'll have a we'll have a look through the gate and see what the what they're doing so the the rocks are being delivered into site so there's limestone and granite which comes from the quarries up at Shap and they look like they've uh, fair knocked about at a pace they have they have so this is a little bit of a stockpile that they've got they've got going on and then there's a, a circular teardrop shaped delivery rule so they, they deliver them onto site there that digger that you can just see the yellow yellow one over the top of the rocks is sorting them out so that they can pick them and take them onto site as they want them those black rolls there are the geotextile membrane and that's what goes underneath the rocks in order to stop them from sinking into the beach so there's a couple of picnic tables left if you want to if you want to sit down and have a minute apparently the old ones collapsed when they tried to when they tried to remove them and take them up they just dropped to bits they were old and rotten so this is the lovely new shiny car park look at that for tarmac that's a fringe benefit of having Belfer Beatty in residence so this little footpath at the side of at the side of the log cabin rather it's closed during working hours so you can't actually access the beach that way because the lorries and the dumper trucks obviously are driving up and down and this is their main beach access road so you need to do what these two good people are doing and either walk down to the boating lake and then get through that way and I believe you can actually get through if you go through the children's playground so that's where we're going to go and it's a good view of the site access from the top of the grass so that's where we're going next this is the access road that they've built so that is the old footpath that's been strengthened and widened to take the the big trucks and this is the little road onto the beach and you can see from all the track marks that they've turned left and they've gone round onto the onto the beach that way and this is the footpath that runs through that runs through the top of the dunes so we're going to follow this and we're going to see where it brings you out because you can get out onto the onto the seafront footpath if you come this way and as you can see people are people are using the the footpath I've come I've come prepared today in my um, in my old shoes I think I might I might shimmy down this bit here but I'll do that without you watching me <coughs> and these snazzy gates are for the safety of pedestrians when there's heavy diggers and machinery and whatnot on the move and you can see they made a little bit of a track with the with the tires so a few people have commented about nesting birds because this section of seafront is is very natural it's very pleasant actually it's quiet there's not usually a right lot of people about just a few people out walking walking dogs and bird watching and enjoying the the fresh air and the sunshine um so more more here than you would probably get at Cleveland. it does tend to be a place where birds will nest and take advantage of the surroundings so each day when they come out to work before they actually start before they actually start doing anything before they start running the diggers up and down they do a visual inspection to make sure where they just walk the beach and do a visual inspection to make sure that there's no birds that have set up camp on the patch of sand that they were planning to work on and if there is they just move somewhere else and, and work in another section because they are actually just as keen on on wildlife as we are and in fact last year we found <laughs> we found a little ring plover 
and it was actually nesting not far from the top of Thornton Gate on Cleveley's Beach right in full view of all the dog walkers and all the pedestrians and everybody using the footpath compared to this it's really busy and there's this little bird sat there nesting so the the lads brought it four cones out and they coned it off and put some red tape round it <laughs> so it had its own little private its own little private nesting area so it did really well it uh, sat there and it was literally about, ooh, probably eight foot away from the seawall, if that. Might have even been nearer. There's some fantastic piece of wood on this, on this strand line. Oh, look at that blank. Kevin saw that a bevin a bevin vapours, there's loads of bits of tree as well and we, we wanted some bits of trees in uh, Cleveland for some signs that we're making they'd be perfect it's a shame I've not got a trolley I have got a trolley, I just didn't bring it <laughs> that's a nice one look at that this is Russell Tower and it's designed to look as if it's leaning into the wind. And the Coast Watch volunteers work in, in here. Um, I think they're in the, the top floor one there. And they look out over Morecambe Bay. This is the bottom end of Morecambe Bay. And this bay is exceptionally dangerous when the tide's coming in. It's so easy to get cut off. And they volunteer to keep an eye on the on the sands and they look out for people that are in trouble and in difficulty. And they work with the RNLI and the Coast Guard to make sure that anybody that needs help is rescued. They're doing the same kind of work here at Fleetwood that they've done already or started already at Cleveland. So you can see how these old wooden groins, all the boards have come out, which makes them pretty much useless, really. They've, they've, they've taken these bits out to make a, a roadway through. So you end up with the beach dropping against the seawall. And it's that high beach that is the really good coastal defence. So the rock groins will come to meet the seawall again, like these wooden ones do and they'll reduce the turbulence of the sea next to the sea wall which will enable the sand to settle out to suspension and that will then enable the beaches to build up and that high beach is your sea defence which protects both the edge of this sea wall from erosion and it reduces the size of the waves that meet the wall so it reduces the risk of overtopping boom boom just like that so because this is all an old sea wall and it's been built in bits over quite a significant length of time its construction varies quite a lot from place to place so in some places you've got a tow you've got a sheet sheet pile at the end of the toe of the concrete and in others you've not so to, to remedy that and to stop the sea from going underneath the concrete this concrete slope where there aren't any shape piles they're putting rocks in so rocks will run in a line along the edge of the sea wall and then the groins will join up to them like they've done at Russell Beach in Cleveland so this big metal roll here is the the roll that they put the the carpet on to unroll it and they're digging out to start positioning, to start positioning rocks. That sounds like another delivery, special delivery. Rocks for the building site. So the same applies here as applied at, at Cleveland. You're gonna end up with piles of rock where they've delivered it and dropped it, which are separate to actual groins that are being built. 
an absolutely beautiful afternoon. I've got other things to do on on Thursday on Digger Day, so I'm I'm out in I'm out in Wednesday afternoon sunshine filming this, and it's really lovely. So this is the completed Russell scheme, and this wall here is the end of where the the Russell scheme came to. So from kind of round about there, you're getting into the bottom of Morecambe Bay, and that wooden groin remains. So the this scheme actually comes from this long groin so they'll be working from roughly round about here don't get your don't get your ruler out and measure it to the exact spot but it's roughly from round about that point and you can see that this coastline here does actually turn so this is this is Russell Point so the tower is often referred to as being as being at Russell Point but it's not actually at the point um, that's when you, you kind of get to the actual tip of this this land mass. So this is on the sort of top left hand corner of uh, Fleetwood when you look at a map. And in actual fact I think this style marks the bottom of Markham Bay which I'll show you when we get up to it. So these, these grounds will come out, the rock work and the new groins will come up to and meet this concrete apron well it's all cobbles that isn't it and then the whole thing will all enable the beach to lift very clever very clever indeed here you go you are at Russell Point and this is the style that I mentioned and over the other side of the wall is Fleetwood Golf Course which is a beautiful recreational space but it also serves a double-edged purpose in that it's also a, a flood flood overflow plane i'll uh, climb up a couple of steps of the style and show you show you the view over the top i'm getting quite warm it's lovely it's absolutely gorgeous there so this has got this has got um carving on it look russell point and it's got some it's got some critters on the handrail so if you just if you just look over here oh it's a long time since i climbed over a stile i might tell you this is the golf course and this is a bridle way so if you've got a horsey you can come for a you can come for a canter along the back of the sea wall these guys are taking the groin boards out before they start working in that area and this is the old lookout so you'll notice that there are a few stones just put in a circle around that side there so they're they're protected and that is a demarcation line to make sure that the diggers don't accidentally reverse over anything that they shouldn't do i've seen that on facebook but i've never actually seen it in real life of course, it all depends where the tide level is on the day that you're on the sea front. You get a better view some days than you do others. Goodness, they go down a long way, don't they? Look how far that grind board's gone down. So that's what they do when they put the new rock ones in. They dig out, they put the textile membrane in the bottom and then they put the rocks on top so you end up with a lot of it hidden underneath the beach it should be like an iceberg it should just have a little bit floating at the top you can see some bits of metal sheet pile here that they've that they've taken out so all of the wood and all of the metal goes back to the compound and then when they've got a full load it's all taken away for recycling so everything everything that can be reused for something else is always is always reused and repurposed. I think, hopefully, I've told you everything that you want to know in this video, but there's plenty of information online on Visit File Coast. There's a link to it on the front page of the website. And that will take you to um, Visit Cleveland and to Visit Fleetwood, where there's chapter and verse, everything that you want to know about each part of the respective scheme 
So there's going to be some piles of rock on the beach which had just been stored, ready to be used and they, they will all eventually, all eventually be lined up into groins. If you've got any other questions, feel free to pop into the venue on a Thursday morning at Cleveland Seafront. I'm there between nine o'clock in the morning and 12 o'clock lunchtime. I've got some plans, I've got loads of photographs and I can tell you pretty much what you want to know about this about this project and the only other thing that I would add is that we're really lucky to be able to draw all this money down from the environment agency who fund projects like this because a lot of coastal communities are not fortunate enough to either have the knowledge to be able to do it or to be able to qualify for funding because it's all it's all doled out according to risk. So they'll only spend so much money if it protects a proportionately much bigger risk. And I think that's it for today. Beautiful day, the birds sound glorious on this grassland at the back of the wall. Really lovely. So if you want to come for a walk and have a look, you get your exercise, you get your steps in and some fresh air. And it's quite interesting to watch as well. So don't forget, make sure that you've signed up for your Visit File Coast email newsletter. Don't forget to subscribe to Visit File Coast on YouTube. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye for now.